Hello, hello! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome, welcome! We are going to be getting started very shortly with some King of the Hill action for Total War Warhammer 2. And, uh, yeah, glad to be with you this morning. I was awakened uh, bright and early about 7 a.m. by a nice 5.7 earthquake, so that was interesting. Um, no injuries, no damage. Everything seems to be fine. We'll see. But, I'm here for all, all of you, because this is what I want to be doing anyway. <laughs> Not a lot else to do, so we're going to get started. Here we go. Let's switch on over to it. We've got a couple of good players to start out here. Uh, Flying Taco masquerading as General Kenobi, and we've got A-Move Hacker here. Uh, map will be Slon Gold. Okay, so we're going to get started here. Looks like uh, Gobos versus Dwarves. Nice thematic matchup to get things started here. Hmm. I might veto this map. Yeah, I don't know about the deployment zones on this map. Um. Let me see. Slon Gold. Yeah, let me see if I can pull this up here. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Uh, how about this? If you want to pick one of the maps from the list here, a hey, move. I'm I'm gonna throw you. How about that? That that's a little bit easier. I'm just gonna provide a list for you guys to pick from, rather than picking from all of the maps because some of the maps are pretty bad. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna change to. Okay, yeah. If Taco's willing to do it, and he's willing to do it. We'll we'll let him walk into it. So for future reference, I'll go ahead and post this in the uh, the description there. Just for anyone who is best map. Oh, Risto. Aristo, yeah, for sure I'm putting this rule in place for you. <laughs> okay, so I'm updating the description now with the, the, dot, the community map list. And it has to be one of the blue or green maps. So for those of you curious, um, actually I'll just post it in chat as well. So here is a community uh, created list of maps for multiplayer. Um, basically they're color coded so you can see which maps are like good to use and which ones are not. Um... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was pretty uh, thematic, Caleb, especially considering the earthquake in Salt Lake this morning, but it's fine. No big deal. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to be getting started. This is Slong Gold, I believe... Depending on the deployment here, I'm curious, I, I think A-Move is probably going to be up on this kind of hill defensive position here, but we'll see. I'm curious to see what uh, Flying Taco has brought here. Gobbo build, I'm guessing.
All right, sorry, I just had to check a text real quick. The green maps are all terrible. They're all just uh, competitive. They're balanced is is the thing. Like, we want maps that are balanced. The blue ones are also balanced, but are a little bit more, you could say, interesting. No. <laughs> no, the red maps are bad. <laughs> uh, it's over a move. I have the high ground, says General Kenobi, because indeed, the, the green skins do have the high ground. Oh, how about this? The dwarfs getting hill camped by the green skins. How often does this happen, huh? And uh, let's take a look at the builds here. The Greenskins are going to be coming in with a heavy air force. We've got uh, several brimstone guns, including, yeah, five brimstone guns. Uh, we've got, let's see here, a rune lord, dwarf warriors, dragonback slayers. Looks like some iron breakers as well. A grumbling guard. We've got some miners with blasting charges. Norgrimlings iron breakers. And, yeah, this uh, gobbo force assembled on the hill here. We've got a couple of Doom Divers, some Goblins, Trolls, looks like, yeah, four units of Trolls, Arachnorok Queen, we've got uh, Wurzag, Dancing Wurzag, nope, Scarsnake. Fittingly, of course, can't take Wurzag with this faction. But yes, Scarsnick's here to lead the Crooked Moon. Look at this scheme. How about that? Pulled off a scheme and managed to take the hill position before the dwarfs even got here. That is a sneaky, ste sneaky scheme indeed. That's, that's not balanced, Aristo, because that favors certain factions over others, right? And, and... It also encourages a style of play that's not particularly interesting to watch because there's not much tactics. You just run into the choke point and cast giant blob spells, basically. I mean, a lot of the game de does de develop into blob fights anyway, often in normal open field battles, but... The map itself is balanced, sure, but it's not balanced. It's not a balanced map in that it doesn't affect all factions equally. And you could argue that all fa all maps don't affect, you know, or all maps affect different factions differently, right? There is certainly an argument to be made there, but I would argue that open maps, or at least maps with, uh, you know, you can certainly have some terrain features like, um, I don't know. Like I like some maps that not not a lot of other people like, but it, I mean, just when you have only choke points like only choke points and there's no opportunity for flanking whatsoever basically it just yeah it ends up not having the most interesting games to watch i guess but uh, gyrocopters are going to come forward and start to wreck these doom divers here uh if they can start to actually blow up the artillery models that is going to be very important one thing you'll notice about doom divers actually shooting at air units is they are very accurate but it uh, looks like this doom diver is getting lit up here uh, they've already disabled two of the machines. The third one is going to be close behind, so that's pretty good. Uh, if they can disable those uh, Doom Divers as quickly as possible. It doesn't look like the Doom Divers are actually focusing on the Gyrocopters anymore. In fact, they're actually just throwing down here at the Norgrimlings Ironbreakers, which is honestly a pretty good target. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see the Trolls will take fire damage from the Blasting Charges if the Blasting Charges are thrown at them. But, uh, yeah... I mean, obviously, trolls do have pretty poor melee attack as well, generally. With Wa active, they'll obviously have a lot more. But uh, just getting through the massive 82 melee defense of those Norgrimlings Ironbreakers, who are now throwing their charges at just Gobbos. <laughs> oh, man. A very good effect there. But uh, definitely getting lit up now by those Doom Divers, just danger close flying in. I don't know. I don't think Taco's manually targeting those, but doing a lot of damage to these elite kind of dwarf units here. And continuing to use these spider summons almost as you would like a vampire coast uh, zombie summon to just continue to bog down this front frontal area here. Dwarf's not really able to uh, flank in any meaningful way. 
But the blasting charges are coming out from the Iron Breakers here. We've got a couple of trolls charging downhill as well. Again, the lack of melee attack, they're only 34 melee attack, means these guys are going to be at minimum base chance to hit. They do go up to 54, but even still, I mean, 80 melee, 80 melee defense is so much. And a beautiful, beautiful... Oh man, right up against the rock here, actually, so it kind of remains stationary a bit. Actually looks like it phases through that, uh, that sort of rock tower there. But a beautiful Curse of the Bad Moon rolling right down the dwarf line. I don't think that actually did any friendly fire whatsoever, which is pretty impressive for a Gobble spell. Not that it does a whole lot of damage to the dwarfs, but more importantly, it does apply a pretty nasty debuff here. Go ahead and have a look. Uh, it's uh, armor, melee defense, and speed, so... Uh, definitely affects the dwarf units more so than the goblin units, absolutely. And man, that overcast does last a long time, just rolling right over the dwarf form formation and doing very little to the gobos. So very nice use of that Curse of the Bad Moon there. Uh, you can see, unfortunately, the Arachnarok Queen is taking a lot of damage from the Rune Lord from these various other units here. You can see the focus fire of the gyros. The gyros, though... Um, again, that fire damage, anti-large, is very good against the trolls, and uh, there's just so many targets for them to shoot at, right? I don't think they have enough ammo to really deal with everything here, and then, you know, short of them, these Dragonback Slayers are pretty much gone. I mean, maybe the Rune Lord can help these uh, Iron Breakers hold out, but the Norgrimlings have already taken a lot of damage here. Uh, Scarsnick has good anti-large AP, and he can just st sit in melee and keep regenerating that WA, right? I mean, none of these units really have enough DPS to, uh, to take him down quickly. And even one of these gy uh, gyros coming down to fight the Doom Divers in melee just to keep them from firing here. But the Doom Divers are coming back and a lot of their machines are still operational, it looks like, potentially. So we'll kind of see how things play out into the mid game. But right now, things are looking in the Greenskin's favor despite the Dwarf's efforts slogging up the hill here. It looks like the Rune Lord's been promptly assassinated by Skarsnik, and that the Doom Divers continuing to rain shots on these dwar elite dwarf infantry is really a problem here. I don't know, uh, they also favor cavalry factions, right, Aristo? Because if you think about, like, like Bretonia in a choke, po <laughs> choke point map, oh man. Like, uh, yeah, open field maps, cavalry factions, artillery factions, um, let's see, shooting factions, which, I mean, you can an ar make an argument, those three alone, every, every single faction in the game fits into one of those three, so open maps, I would say, are more or less equal for everyone, right? I mean, maybe you could be, make an argument that very specifically monster factions, but um, even then, all of the monster factions have good shooting or cavalry or you know mobility as well right so i don't know i am not a fan much of choke point maps at all i mean in campaign don't get me wrong there's a place for that and it's fun you know occasionally to change things up i don't think it's necessarily bad to have those maps in the game or anything but uh, for a competitive multiplayer situation like i'm sorry but no not all, not all factions have the same AoE magic damage potential, and that's one of the biggest thing. That's probably the biggest thing, honestly, is like monsters and AoE magic for choke point battles. If you have those two things, you can pretty much win. So anyway, watching some gobbles get blended by those blades there, um, and. There, yeah, the gyrocopters are out of ammo, so there's not a whole lot more they can do at this point. Um, looking at the dwarf forces, they're pretty scattered across here. They do have a handful of infantry, some iron breakers kind of fighting back to back here. A lot of these other units are getting chased off by gobos, which is a little bit painful. But uh, the gyros will continue to shoot here. Most of the trolls have actually been routed as well, so... Oh man, here comes another Curse of the Bad Moon right on top of Skarsnik as he fights these dwarf warriors here. Master Rune of Negation will obviously, uh, on top of the magic resistance, pretty much resist all of the damage. But again, the debuff is really what you're looking for from that. These down, Dwarf Warriors down to 16 melee defense from that debuff from the Curse of the Bad Moon. So, um, yeah, pretty good stuff there. The uh, thing about the Curse of the Bad Moon is, of course, applying the debuff to your own troops is bad. But as I mentioned, but specifically because of the armor and melee defense on that debuff, that tends to affect Dwarfs a lot more than it would affect your own troops, right? Although certainly Gobbo's leadership is not helped by getting friendly fired by their own leaders, but whatever. They're just Gobbo's. They can take it. Uh, 
Uh, Doom divers use unit models as ammo. It's separate. It's separate. Yeah, they don't. They don't actually use unit models as ammo. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious, uh, and it would be a little sad too. Cause then, <laughs> yeah, as you lost uh, crew members, you would you would actually lose ammo, which doesn't happen for most artillery. Um, but get him, get him, troll! I believe in you. But somehow the gyros got your buddy. Is he? Is he down? Oh, he struggled for a minute. I don't know, the dwarves actually might be able to tank this out. We'll see. They do have quite a few uh, troops still fighting here. Uh, just through numbers, though, again, you can see those seven Grumbling Guard eventually going to get taken out. It's kind of Scarsnick versus most of the world now. Whoop. I don't know what that sound was. That was bad. Cabo Shaman noping out of that real quick. And, yeah, the Rune Lord getting poisoned a little bit here. Very, very close to routing. It's basically just uh, a matter of taking out the gyros in melee. They're all trying to chase trolls off, it seems like, which is interesting. And probably effective, to be honest. But uh, Skarsnik, his anti-large AP alone will take care of the gyro coppers, no problem, so... That was probably one of the best Curse of the Bad Moons I've ever seen, <laughs> to be honest. Like, you usually don't see them that impressive, but... That actually, uh, that debuffed basically an entire Dwarf Infantry line, which granted wasn't super wide, but was very elite, so definitely helped. Absolutely. Skarsnik, uh, how you doing, bud? He's doing alright. Again, look at that melee defense, though. Uh, Skarsnik and, and his Shaman are taking swings. They're just not doing any damage at all to these Iron Breakers. You can see, finally, when the Gobbles get a rear charge, they actually bypass the melee defense and get a handful of hits there. And that will be enough, probably, to route these Iron Breakers off, yeah, just from getting surrounded there. That kind of shows the importance of getting rear attacks, too, uh, pretty well, but... Oop, bombing, late-game bombing. Almost missed it. Again, though, Skarsnik himself is going to be pretty much too much, I think, Bombs are doing something, though. Definitely getting some of those gobos. The Rune Lord looks like he shattered to some gobos over here. Yeah, that's bad. Leadership being gone. There's still a couple of gyros out in the periphery, but... Once Skarsnik actually starts to fight these gyros in melee... That will pretty much be the end of it. Let's see. I don't know. Does they move have ground troops still somewhere, I guess? I guess it still counts some of these dwarf warriors as being on the field. Oh, and yeah, these gyrocopters are coming down to the ground now. <laughs> bursted. Bursted your brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, people say dwarfs are good in choke points, but I don't know if that's actually true, because they don't have any any AoE damage, um, besides, like, the Fiery Ring of Thoria, which is not even that good. Um, I guess the, the their artillery is really what makes them so good in choke points, and the fact that their infantry is so tanky, right? So, I guess that's really what it is, but... To be honest, if I had to say the strongest choke point faction would probably be the Lizardmen because they have such incredibly strong AoE uh, magic damage, and also they have very sturdy troops, they have really strong monsters that can just hold down a choke point. Shattered units also count as ground troops. Oh, okay. Hey, what's up, Bodvar? Skarsnik is gonna, gonna give the Choppas the Prada. Yeah? He definitely is. Oh, man. <laughs> Those poor night goblins. This could potentially be a while, but I really don't think that uh, he can he can kill Skarsnik here. This night goblin shaman's just hiding up against the wall here. So yeah, this is gonna gonna take a while probably. Hmm, 
Yeah, I don't know. Not really a lot to commentate on at the moment. It's just kind of more, more of the same, to be honest. Oh, here comes Skarsnick, though. I do believe the gyros have to engage him here, though, as he is the only unit left, yeah. Yeah, I think that is otherwise going to be breaking the attacking rule, technically, so... I mean, this these guys maybe not technically since they're not shattered, but... Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason to prolong this. <laughs> Sneaky stabbing. Wa active as well, so Skarsnick gets some good melee attack. He's up to 92 melee attack. The gyrocopters do count as large, so... Yeah. Yeah, he should, he should be able to deal with them pretty easily here. And again, the more damage gets done, the quicker the balance of power is going to turn. They probably will route off this Night Goblin Shaman. We'll see. He's also doing some damage in here. I don't know, though. Gyrocopters, uh, they do have 32 melee attacks, 66 weapon strength. So they actually can do some damage, potentially. I mean, Skarsnik has, what, 55 attack? So they're going to be at minimum base chance to hit. But, I mean, that's still a uh, chance to hit, right? Or not quite minimum base chance. Pretty close. But, uh... <laughs> We'll see. I guess there is RNG dependent that Skarsnick could actually lose this. There's, it's a pretty small chance, but I guess it is possible mathematically. Um, but yeah, he's starting to dismantle, just manually dismantle these uh, machines here. Oop, a rear charge might help. Actually, what's the charge bonus on Gyrocopters? 25? Yeah, so with the charge bonus, they're hitting at 55, and they actually do have enough melee attack to get hits on Skarsnick here. And since these are multi-model units, as long as A-Move Hacker has one of them in at a time, he can actually cycle charge the other ones, uh, which is kind of hilarious, to be honest. Um, I don't know that it's really going to be enough, though. Skarsnick, uh, with his charge defense versus large, if they charge him from his frontal arc, they won't get the advantage of that charge bonus. So they do specifically need to charge him from behind, or the side. Um... But I still don't think it's going to be enough. I mean, yeah. With the poison also debuffing their weapon strength here. There was a chance. Try breaking through a vampire count's choke point with the mortis engine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, if you have missiles, you can pull them out of the choke point. But, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, that was very close. I'm surprised at the gyrocopters how well they did in the late game. There, I thought for sure it was just completely f completely done for, but they actually managed to almost win the day. It was very very close there. Skarsnick, honestly, you you wouldn't think to take Skarsnick in this match because he has you know anti large right, but that actually ended up mattering a lot. That anti large AP. <laughs> yeah, who would have thought any large AP is so important versus the dwarves? <laughs> uh You're right, Aristo, it's not. We're still playing under the rules of the banner tournament. Yes. Yeah, it's I agree. It's boring. <laughs> Is it the right thing to do if you want to win? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Is it boring to watch? Yes, absolutely. Sometimes I wish the players would fast forward, but that's fine. Honestly, it's no big deal. Um okay, who's up next by the way? That's skink. Okay. Okay.
Yeah, the flame cannons now, especially since the flame cannons work a lot better, like, yeah, the arc of fire, because it can shoot up and over your troops, just obliterates chuck, ch chuck points. Yeah, chuck points. <laughs> ah, chuck points. Ah, da, 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 chuck points. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. The high ground won. Ah, imagine that. Barely. Barely. <laughs> Hello there. Okay. How is the audio, by the way, guys? YouTube is telling me that the audio is all garbage. But, uh, 69 washing? Nice. Gyros are portable high ground. Yeah, in a way, when you think about it, they kind of are. Like, yeah, and it's an interesting situation. Cool. Okay, audio's good. Yeah, I'll have to fix it after the stream. I don't know if it just reset my settings because Windows or what, but... I had to message someone back real quick. Okay, cool. No distortion or anything. Awesome. Thanks, Misha. Appreciate it. Hey, what's up, Art? Cool, cool. <laughs> Coast, ban, high elves, and empire. And Dutch Ginks going Lizardmen. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and pick the map now, I think. Um, if I go here, we can, we can find a pretty interesting one, uh, like, mm, mm, I could be really mean and do, like, Norden, um, or, how about, oh no, not that one, that one has choke points, um, <laughs> see yeah let's do Volksgrad that's a good classic it's uh, asymmetric but it's balanced in my opinion of course I remember to change the map you think I was gonna let them play on slon gold again <laughs> a wild Sartosa appears yep whoops I totally clicked on their armies too my bad and just uh, quickly uh, hide that. Whoop, and quickly smack my microphone as well. Apologies. Prague. Yeah, that, there. I have a list of good maps here. Star of Averlorn. Aristo. No, you're banned from suggesting maps. You are banned from maps. Most of the quest battle maps are pretty bad, to be honest.
Okay. Oh, these guys are waiting for me. My bad. Again, yeah, just looking at some texts about the earthquake. <laughs> Yeah, most of the Empire maps are pretty good. Um, and not all of the quest battle maps are bad. A lot of them, if they just fix the deployment zones, they'd be a lot better. Like Ogham Shard, for example. But this one is asymmetric. You might say it's imbalanced, but I disagree. I think there's things you can do on both sides. Uh, one side has kind of a more general, just big hill, but it's not like you really have that many great artillery lines of sight, to be honest, because of the different ridges and trees. Um, and you might say that the person on this side has a severe disadvantage, but, I mean, you still have hills that you can set up on and get a downhill advantage, specifically wherever you're fighting, right? Like over here, you can kind of come up and around over here. You've got this big forest that you can utilize as well. So, I mean, for me, this is kind of a good... It's asymmetric, but it's balanced, right? A lot of people will try and push up and kind of contest this little area right here, which is pretty decent. It's not... I mean, it kind of slopes this way, right? So it's not like either side necessarily has a huge advantage one way or the other. It does kind of slope a little bit down either way from each ridge line right here. But, um, yeah, because the sloping is kind of know at a side for the most part now right here if you try and march up over here and like take an engagement on this side you can see there is a pretty good slope right here that you're going to be impacted by so it's an interesting map for sure only haggard map streams when well galahan uh if aristo wants to post <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, you, I don't know if you stream on Twitch, Aristo, but Aristo will occasionally host uh, his coffee cup, which has interesting maps, let's say. Um, this map gets in your coffee cup selection. Yeah, see, I like this map. Like, I like this one. I like Norden. There are some maps like this that have, like, hills and trees that are asymmetric that I like. They're, I, I would say they're still balanced, but they're asymmetric, right? Because you can kind of do different things here. But let's have a look at the builds. I see... Uh, Fleet Captain, Lore of Beasts here, so clearly we're off to a meme start. RNS up front, Sartosa Free Company, we've got Crabs, and Animated Hulks, no idea. Bloaty Boy with more Sartosa Company over there, we've got a Death Shriek Goose on the loose. No anti-large, but better weapon damage and melee attack, 60 melee defense as well, really? Oh no, only 42. Um, that's Gorok over there. Uh, we've got more Bloaty Boys and Sartosans. Uh, as for the Lizardmen, a couple of Feral Cold Ones here. We've got some Source Warriors with Shields, a Gorok, a couple of Feral Basilodons, uh, Temple Guards, and Skink Skirmishers. So, yeah. Pretty good stuff. It's a wild, wild uh, Vampire Coast build. Not something you would see every day for sure. The Death Shriek Goose is one that you really don't see often at all because of the lack of anti-large. Um, it's still pretty good, though, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't hit quite as hard as the regular Terror Geist uh, against large units as a result. But Sartosin uh, Free Company, got to push up here. Start to pop some pistols into these Saurus Warriors. Saurus only have, what, 60 armor, so this is actually going to be pretty effective here. And it looks like Taco's definitely going to try and kite uh, Dutch Skink down the hill a little bit here. Um does have some skink skirmishers that can try and respond to this, but yeah, you can see some Sartosans running up and around in the woods there. Technically visible, but noticed. They might not be. And here come some of the Feral Cold Ones unleashed to come after these uh, kiting Sartosan Free Company. Arness is going to crest the hill, though. She's over there looking, not really wanting to get involved. Looks like she's going to net those cavalry to actually try and bail out the Sartosan Free Company there. But the Feral Cold Ones by themselves are probably going to be enough to, uh, to get that. And having to burn that Spearfisher's net just for that is not the best. Uh, but let's see kind of how it goes here. Death Shriek Goose comes down and uh, takes a good chunk out of those Feral Cold Ones. The Saurus and uh, Cold One Spear Riders, though, responding is going to be pretty decent, but uh, you know what blobs mean for this type of an army. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like there is any Bloaty Boys in an immediate position to capitalize, but uh, potentially this one has been spotted and could get in here. 
Got some Sartos and Free Company also emerging from the woods up on the top ground. Uh, and yeah, <clears throat> Arnesa might get routed off here, honestly, on leadership. She's got Manan's luck, but she is fully surrounded, and Gorok is coming in for Pound Town. So that's not the best, um, but the Bloody Boys are coming in. The, t the Terror Geist has also uh, gotten free here. It's going to come around and start to breath, I'm sure, on this blob here. Um, yep, just a top-down VTOL breath should do a ton of damage to Arnesa. That was bad. A lot of friendly fire there. Um, and it looks like the Sartos and Free Company are going to get friendly fired here by the Bloaty Boy. That's actually not the best value in the world, considering it actually gets the Sartos and Free Company as well. Probably ended up costing more gold for Taco than anything else, but yeah. The Goose and RNS at the very least can fight side by side now. The rest of the army is just apparently going to stand here and watch, though, as this happens. Um, yeah. No, no respect for RNS, I guess. I mean, they... They could move in and try and assist, but they're, they're just choosing not to, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to see, like, some kind of Van Guy's Revenge or just something to bust up this blob. I mean, it's just asking for it. You've got multiple high-value units here, kind of all blobbed up in one spot. So, yeah. Here we go. Now we get a Van Guy's Revenge. Something to break this blob up and try and bail our Nessa out. Might be a little bit late for that, honestly, but still does quite a bit of damage there. Didn't probably do as much as uh, Taco would have wanted, but I guess uh, there's not really a lot of tools for taking down the crab. So even if he does lose Aranessa, I'm not really sure that... Uh... <laughs> I guess the Temple Guard being kept in the back here as a reserve, they could potentially help uh, deal with those those crabs, obviously. But yeah, Aranessa being gone is bad, and the, the Goose will have regeneration. So it's probably not going to continue to crumble, but... Yeah. It's an interesting one. Crab's going to come forward and start to fight here. I guess these Saurus do have a lot of uh, chevronage going on. So 34 attack, 40 defense. Likewise, Gorok also does good uh, AP damage as well. So... Okay, and now the Sartos and Free Company choosing to engage. <laughs> yeah, where's those other bloaty boys, by the way? There's still one chilling here. I thought there was one more somewhere. I must have uh, missed it going up. Probably blew up those Source Warriors, to be honest. But, yeah, Sartos and Free Company are going to get crumped a little bit here. If they had maybe come in for that rear charge earlier, they might have got a better situation. But uh, Stildon will come forward. It looks like the animated hulks are not actually in melee. But another Van Guy's Revenge going to go off. Does actually rip up two units of Saurus pretty good. But also just decimates those Free Company. All three units just gone. So, uh, Taco definitely believing in the friendly fire lifestyle. Uh, Gorok getting pounded on a little bit by the Rotting Leviathan. It doesn't have the best weapon strength. But anti-infantry on 400 is pretty good. It's uh, actually very solid. Uh, let's see, 15 bonus versus infantry. So it does have, you know, up in the 60s in terms of melee attack. Not too bad. The animated hulks, unfortunately, because of the low armor, will take a lot of damage from these skink skirmishers. So the goose probably wants to try and come down and, uh, you know, occupy them, keep them from firing. And, oh boy, we've got another, uh, we've got another uh, bloated corpse. I might honestly run that bloated corpse, like, right here. Like, right into these temple guard right here. But looks like he's going to go up on the high ground and maybe try and sweep up and down instead. But uh, Spearfisher's net being used there. Might try and pull the Rotting Leviathan out of that situation. Those Temple Guard are doing a lot of damage right there. Oop. I almost missed it. I saw it go off there. Wow, yeah. It just terrifies those Star Chamber Guardians despite the Shield of Eons. Um, being popped to give them more armor and expert uh, charge defense. They still just get terrified away there. Very unfortunate situation. Um, yeah, that bloaty boy keeping things close. I think it did do quite a bit of damage as well to those animated hulks, though. And they're not doing too hot. The Sartos and Free Company as well. Uh, got a few more coming back kind of out in the periphery, but... The Goose is just chilling for now, trying to keep its uh, regeneration going and not get too far uh, out, of, out of field, so to speak. We'll come in close and watch these animated hulks duke it out with the, uh, the Temple Guard and Arnessa fighting in here as well. 
Big old crab. Here come some living pirates. Their anti-infantry, they, they'll do okay damage to the, the temple guard, especially in like a rear charge situation. It's not going to be amazing, but... They do promptly get terrified away there, and it looks like the uh, crab's down. Yeah, balance power starting to tell against the vampire coast. Ooh, me. Yeah. And I think just maybe waiting a little bit too long to go give Arnessa and that Terror, terror Goose some support. Um, definitely definitely cost the game, but I do like the build, certainly. It's, it's, a, it's a wild one. Definitely pretty different. Okay, and there it is. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, the bloody boys, a couple of them, actually 70 kills on that one, not too bad. The other one did take out um, Cold One Spear Riders. The one of them, though, just detonating their own their own unit. <laughs> GG. GG. All right, so who's up next? Let's have a look. Uh, it's you, Aristo. I'll PM you the password. And just for you, we'll pick an interesting map. Give some love to the bloaty boys. Oh yeah, that was that was good. That was good. I mean, three three bloaty boys, all relatively decent. In terms of gold value, at least two of them paid for themselves. The third one is dubious, <laughs> dubious at best. But that's just how it goes sometimes, right? Okay. Hey, what's up, Grom Brindle? Okay. Whew, need some more caffeine, honestly. Getting, getting a little sleepy. Woke up pretty early this morning. Okay, and let's go ahead and queue up some music as well. We're hanging out here. There we go. There's a, there's a fire track. Let's kind of kick back, relax for a second. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Lots of fun today. Had some wild, wild games to start. All the memes, unlimited memes, you might say. Okay, Let's see here. Um, okay, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and postpone then. Um, in that case. We're gonna do Pesce. Um, so.
Um, so yeah, we basically... Yeah, we have one other person right now, so far, so if any, any of you guys out there want to play, want to get in on the action, uh, we've got still plenty of open space on the list, so... Yeah. Come one, come all. Feel so inclined. We are going to be using the banner rules, of course. You know, Andrew, I've tried literally everything I can think of. I don't know what other content creators do. Like, I honestly, I don't know. Because, like, I, I mean, I guess just because I'm used to moving the camera quickly while I'm playing. But, yeah, like, I honestly have no idea. I've tried, I've tried my best for years, to be honest, I'll be honest. But, I just, I don't know, like, I'll, I'll literally show you when we get into game. Like, I have all the options set up to maximum cinematic smoothing. And, you know, whatever, but I, like, I get some people get, I get motion sick, but I just, I don't really know what I can change, honestly, in terms of game settings, controls, like, I don't know. So yeah, sorry about that, I, I really want to improve. But I have no idea, like, what I, what to do, to be honest, at this point. Like, I've tried everything I can think of. Until, until Creative Assembly makes... Uh, until they get support for variable input, like a joystick, you're always gonna get choppy camera movements in this game. Like, uh, I, I, unless other content creators have figured out a way to hack that into the game, or something, but... Like, for me, when I've even tried to use, like, something with a joystick to get smooth camera panning, you know, so it's not so jarring with WASD, then, like, I just, it doesn't, it, it still is either on or off. Like, there's no variable input there. So I don't really know, to be honest. So, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll have to talk to some other content creators. A, a lot of them do more, like, I guess, cutting between, like, picks, or, like, different, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Shots, right? Um, and maybe they just do, don't do, like, active camera movement in-game? Or, I don't know. I don't know. I don't- I, I'll be honest. I don't watch as much content for Total Warhammer as I used to, so I'm not really in tune with what other people are doing on their channels. But... Yeah, yeah, I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah, and I know it's not a problem for everyone. Like, it's specifically a problem for people who get motion sick easily, right? And I get that. Um, like, it sucks. I, I would hate to be in that position. <laughs> Obviously, I don't get sick because I'm the one in control, right? But I, I I get what you mean. There are some things that I can't watch, even like like certain action movies with a ton of shaky cam. Like I can't really, I don't know.
Um, let's do map here. Uh, what does Torgard look like? Let's see. Let's do... Uh, yeah, this is fine. Let's just do tour guard. That seems fine. I'll have to ask my son, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of the time I'm I'm like panning around with using the, the like the wheel. Um, I need to reset some of my other controls that I've messed up. But um, like because I have a second screen here, like I can't pan, pan side to side with the camera with the mouse on the edges of the screen because my mouse, uh, if I go to the right, just goes over to my second screen, right? So like I kind of have to use other methods to pan left and right. Um, And so, yeah, maybe maybe I just need to reset those controls a little better. They really need to add a search bar for maps. Yes, they also need to add a filter that removes all of the terrible maps. Like maps for multiplayer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I shouldn't call them terrible. They're awesome. They're actually really, really cool. Like, if you look at the... The art and everything on them, like, they're obviously very well made, right? It's just that they're not well designed for multiplayer, which is fine. You know, they're designed for whatever quest battle um, they're designed for, typically. Um, but it would be nice, it would be nice to have a filter. Maybe just filter out all quest battle maps. And even then, like, there are some that are good for tournaments, but I don't know. Uh, da, da, da. sorry, just got a work text. Got to respond to real quick. I'll have to respond to this in a minute. Sorry, it's it's gonna take a long long time. Um. Mo the medieval two music is default for my streams. Basically, is what that is what that's about. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah. See, when I'm panning side to side like this, is that what's too fast? I could see that being too fast. Um. But that I don't think rotation speed. Yeah. See, I have cin cinematic smoothing all the way up. My can my speed is super low here. But the rotation speed, I think, if I Ah, oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. Actually, wow, that makes a huge difference, just that one tick. Okay. That's a little bit better. I, I can still get, make myself even a little sick doing that, but yeah, okay. 
this is pretty much how I have it here. Um, and then... Okay, let's set that back up. And I can do this. That's a little better, okay. We're getting somewhere. Smoothing is min, you say? I should. You mean I should turn, turn cinematic smoothing all the way down? That doesn't make sense to me, but... Let's see what kind of difference that makes. Oh no, I don't I don't like that. That feels really floaty to me in terms of controls. I mean, yes, it's smooth, but in terms of actually uh, I don't like that. I, mm, I I mean, I could cast like this. It would take me a long time to get used to. But this is, it feels like I'm, I, like I'm microing in butter. <laughs> yeah, see exactly what I'm talking about, Galahan. That seems super counterintuitive to me. <laughs> oh my god. I, I've had a channel for how long and I just barely am figuring this stuff out. That actually is a lot better in terms of smoothness. It, it feels horrible. It literally feels like I'm controlling like a like a <laughs> a butter. <laughs> I don't even know like a like a a boat that's floating in a lake made of like semi melted butter. Like it's not completely solid, but it just uh, feels gross to me somehow. Maybe because I'm used to playing with it being very snappy, and when you're playing, you need it, like, snappy and fast. Um, but I guess I can cast like this, since I'm not playing for today. <laughs> and, I mean, I can still quick zoom to another part of the map by just clicking on it, right? So... So maybe we'll do this. This is actually a little bit too much. Whoop, not that. Um, <laughs> these guys are getting started. It looks like I can't change it once they started. That's fine. Um, or wait, no, it's controls, duh. <laughs> Let's bump that up just a couple ticks, and that's a little bit better. Okay, I can do that. So, looking at the builds here for the Vampire Counts, we've gone uh, Kemmler, I would imagine, on foot with a couple White Kings. Looks like, uh, yeah, Heinrich, or Vlad, actually. Vlad, the dad. Uh, he's got the Karstein Ring, all that jazz, a Mortis Engine, Sternsman, Skeleton Warriors, whole bunch of zombies. Uh, we've got Hex Wraiths as well, which is an interesting pick in this matchup. Uh, potentially, the Lizardmen don't have the best magic damage in the world, so that could be pretty good. Couple of Blood Knights as well, so definitely an elite Cav Force to look for there. Uh, for the Lizardmen here. Looks like we've got a couple of Carnosaurs, Saurus Scarvet and a Feral. We've got some Temple Guards and Saurus Warriors up front. We do have a unit of Sacred Croxgore, so there is some magic damage here. Sacred Croxgores do offer you an option for that, so that's good. We've got a Life Slon as well. Looks like some Skink Jabs in the back. And uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. Very interesting build. Very, very interesting build. Uh, what's up, Romulan Dog? Smooth butter casta, yes, but it just... I, okay, okay. No, no, I, I, I get you. It, it feels gross, just like rubbing butter all over your body feels gross, but it is smooth. I'll give you that. <laughs> Carnosaur rushing in here. Uh, the Mortis Engine is maybe a little bit overextended as it tries to saturate in that front line, but uh, yeah, you can see as it takes damage, the White King's Vlad all sweep up and around, and the Mortis... Uh, sorry, the uh, Hex Race also get in here to bail that Mortis Engine out, but look at the jab fire coming in. That Mortis Engine had to have taken a ton of damage right there. Um, unfortunately, it did not get finished off, but believe it or not, the Slon also does magic damage. You can see the Sacred Croxies trying to push through to get in here, um, but the Hex Race are very fast, very, very fast. They can pull away quite quickly, get out of that situation. Meanwhile, Skeleton's engaging here on the low ground. 
against some Saurus. They'll get cut up in time, but Saurus, because of their relatively low melee attack, are, it will take them uh, quite a while. The Blood Knights, though, quite a bit out of position here, so if we have a look, they're not really in any position to kind of support this uh, engagement where the monsters are, which is the, the, you know, the targets they want to go after. The Star Chamber Guardians and the Temple Guards are obviously fending them off quite well, and the Star Chamber Guardians also have magic damage, so yeah, there's quite a few units the Hex Rays have to worry about there. But uh, meanwhile, in the main line here, this is kind of just a grinding fight. Eventually, we'll probably go in the Lizardmen's favor, but the Salon needs to be careful that he doesn't get beat up by the White Kings here. Of course, they have anti-infantry and relatively low melee attacks. So they're not going to do a lot of DPS to him very quickly, um, but looks like the Carnosaur is sweeping back up and around to make sure the Salon stays healthy. And yeah, the, Liz uh, the cavalry for the Vampire Counts just doesn't really have a great home to find here. They do manage to get... Looks like a pretty good surround on these uh, Temple Guard here. These Blood Knights, they have taken some damage, but oh man, Hex Race coming in for a charge. They get a little bit caught up by those Star Chamber Guardians, though. So they definitely, yeah, quick hit and run, exactly what you need before those Sacred Croc Stores and the Star Chamber Guardians get in there. That being said, with, with uh, those units there, the Blood Knights can come up and around, and uh, the one of the units is here, the other unit is here, so... Uh, an open field charge straight into these croc scores might, might not be a bad idea if you don't get hung up on those star chamber guardians or exactly like this. Come up here and get a nice rear charge on these temple guard and the, uh, the carnosaur, but it looks like he pulls out there at the last second. Uh, the uh, Saurus Warriors here did eventually get drained away, but look at this mortis engine. It's pretty much done for as the feral carnosaur pushes through and finish it off with a few more attacks here. A lot of Grave Guard and Zombies have been lost in this main pocket as well. There's no Corpse Cart support, which is a huge mistake. Huge, huge mistake. You always need Corpse Carts. At least a one Corpse Cart Unholy Lodestone at all times. But I would advocate at least, like, one Unholy Lodestone, and you might as well bring another one, uh, the 251s, just for the Vigor Mortis, honestly. Had to help one of your pockets, uh, you know, fighting. Kind of grinding, but... As it is right now, Lizardmen looking pretty good here. Uh, fairly favorable for them. They do have uh, these Temple Guard kind of getting sandwiched right here between multiple Blood Knights. That's a bit of a rough situation there. Likewise, the Ethereal units uh, are still fighting. They're taking a lot of damage, though, getting sandwiched in between uh, the uh, Croxagors, Rock'em Sock'em, Crocodiles, and the Temple Guard here. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... Uh... That's a bad day for the spooky ghosts as they get chased away. Meanwhile, on the main line here, it looks like a banishment went off. Got some pretty good damage in on the zombies and skeleton warriors. Just trying to clear out some of the chaff here. Uh, the Slon is having to run away from Vlad, which is uh, pretty, obviously a pretty wise decision. And Vlad is going to be very tanky here with his two White Kings, but the Sacred Croc scores especially, uh, you, you know, they have pretty heavy weapon damage. Obviously, both of the Carnosaurs as well. And once they get to that critical binding phase, yeah, you can see the Hex Rays just sitting out there taking that crumbling damage. Um, not... Yeah, actually, uh, not a lot of great targets for them. I mean, if they come in here, even, again, the Slon 24 attack doesn't seem like a lot, but these guys only have 23 defense, right? So the Slon actually has a pretty good engagement against them. Um, yeah. Interesting. Maybe a smidge less butter. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like this is a pretty good... I'll have to experiment around with it a little bit more. And, man, I... I guess... I feel like I knew that at one point in the past. And maybe I just forgot. But, yeah, that cinematic smoothing... The fact that that slider is backwards... Seems very, very counterintuitive to me. But looks like we're going to have a regrowth on this uh, old blood here. As he continues to cycle charge the vampires in the center. You can see the grave guard absolutely getting worked over. White Kings and Vlad fighting here. Oh man, Vlad's fighting a Croxagor. Nice, gets a good hit there. Vlad, of course, is an absolute champion. Knows no fear. He's basically the best footboard in the game, to be honest. Is is Vlad the best footboard in the game? Okay, debate in the comments, in, in the chat. Is Vlad better than Morgur? I, I would say because Vlad has lore of vampires and because of what he is, he is actually the best footlord in the game. What do you guys think? How did the Hex Race get their morale back? Well, you see, they're unbreakable. So, uh, I mean, they're undead. <laughs> Which basically means they're unbreakable, right? So, I've actually been some testing recently, and I'm going to be putting out a video about health and leadership 
uh, within the next few weeks. Um, I just need to write up the script and get it all recorded and put together. But one of the things that it, in doing that video, I did some research about crumbling and exactly how the mechanic works for disintegration and everything. And uh, yeah, undead units are functionally unbreakable for the most part um, in terms of getting them to, dis to disintegrate. Like you can get them to crumble, but crumbling, uh, it does 10 damage per second, which means it will take more than 10 minutes for a zombie unit to crumble from ho full health to zero. Like more than 10 minutes, right? So if you think about that, a, a, a unit that routes is combat ineffective immediately upon routing. Whereas a unit that's crumbling can potentially sustain themselves for an additional, you know, five to seven minutes, literally five to seven minutes continuing to fight, right? So even the lowest tier units are in many cases functionally unbreakable. You can get them to disintegrate, but it's not easy. Um, and their higher tier units are pretty much unbreakable. Like, almost completely. So, yeah. Ungrim is pretty good too. Noctilus is best. Double summon OP. Uh, yeah. Uh, Noctilus is almost as tanky as well. I mean, he has better melee defense. He doesn't have the same uh, self-regeneration and uh, damage res resistance. Also doesn't have Master of Beguilement. But the double summon is pretty good. I will agree with that. Um, but Noctilus isn't a Footlord. He can take a mount, right? He's not just a Footlord. So I'm, I'm talking pure Footlord. No mounts. No option to take anything else. Only your own two feet. Vlad has to be the best. Yeah, Skrull can get fireballed. Yep. Yeah, Skrull can get fireballed. He's also relatively squishy. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of armor. Um, he has pretty good combat stats, but... Like, he doesn't have any self-regeneration either. Morgher, I would say, is arguably better than Skrull. He has regeneration, missile resistance, and two spawn summons for free. Right? <laughs> and even though Skrull's a caster, I would argue that Morgher's probably a better lord. Gorst, get out. Get out. Uh, yeah, the Vampire Death Star continues to try and fight here in the late game, but it's just too much. The Healing Slon with the double Carno, uh, the fact that these Blood Knights, I mean, they're they are doing their best to continue to cycle charge. And you can see the Hex Race actually managed to get up to their healing cap, two XP Chevrons. So credit to Dutch Skink for uh, using them very well in what is a terrible situation. But... You can see the Sacred Rock'em Sock'em Proxies still rocking. Carnosaurs and obviously the ROR Temple Guards. So there's really no place for the Hex Rays. Blood Knights, though, will continue to make their presence felt as they kind of charge in and out here, but the Carnos will eventually wear them down as well. Life Slon is a Footlord? <laughs> no, they... No, they, they, they they float, man. They're floaters. They're absolute floaters. Um. <laughs> Whoops. Brought my phone. They also count as large, right? Quite large. I love Sacred Croc scores, man. They just look so happy. Oh, uh, good boy. Who's a good boy, huh? Like a giant, angry reptile puppy. Look at his face. He's so excited to be here. Like, oh, do I get a treat? Did I do a good job? Face just covered in blood. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's the way to end. Adorable Croc scores. Girth you? <laughs> Touche. He is on his own two feet. You're right. So is Big Bird. But Durthu is Durthu better than Big Bird? Probably, actually. So maybe you're right. Maybe Durthu is the best footlord. <laughs> uh, you know, Livid does have valid point. Um, but uh, yeah, credit to, to Pesha here. He managed to beat 
Dutch Skink out. Dutch Skink did a great job trying to keep his Blood Knights alive in the Hex Race as well. 131 kills on the Sternsman, but I honestly think you just, like, cut two of these Skeleton Warriors and bring an Unholy Lodestone Corpse Cart to help support that fight a little bit longer, and this honestly probably would have worked out that much better. Uh, just that passive, that additional passive healing is, is so important, so. Okay, um, Aristo, let's see. All right, let me respond to this work text real quick. Um, I am going to put on some music for you guys, and I'll be right back. Ah, uh, Risto says, cancel him. Okay. Uh, hey, Falcon, you got your new, you got your new PC up and running yet? You want to jump in? I've got, I've got an open slot right now. Aristo is officially canceled. Uh, let's see, let's see who else is playing. I guess I can jump in. Or, we could just call a break for the time being and I could come back in maybe like an hour or so. Okay, so I'm now in the lobby, and we'll go ahead and
Okay. Arthurial Fraught Flies, though. Okay. That is a valid point. Yep, that is a valid point. Nikai. <laughs> he is a Footlord as well. Technically. Yes. So is Throg, you could say. Okay. Here. Going with the lads, nice. The boys are back in town. Banning Tomb Kings, understandably. Alright, so he bans Tomb Kings and Bretonia. I think I'm gonna go with uh, Dark Elves then. I think I'll stay with Dark Elves. Don't play Dark Elves super often, but I think I will here. So. Oh, yeah, you guys are still over there. That's fine. I'm gonna leave the screen blocker up. And we don't necessarily need the start text, but... Actually, let's do this. Uh, there we go. Okay. That works as a screen blocker. Not that I don't... I don't trust Pesha here, but... <laughs> Um, okay, so let's pick this, go there. Grab that. And from there... What shall we do? Let's do something a bit wild, shall we? <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, okay, so with this, I have one more can put here That doesn't look like a very good build this is what I tell myself all the time, though, to be honest. Um. <laughs> yeah, this is not, not the best. Um, what can I do that would be better?
that. Maybe not, though, to be honest. <laughs> Definitely up, up there. Well, I think we might just roll with this, to be honest. It's not very good, but... It's, uh, it's a build, as they say. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Uh, uh, whoops, forgot to change the map. No big deal, though. We can just fight on this one again. It's fine. Get Gore's ugly face off the screen. Uh, 100% pile of dirt. 100%. So, I'm now going to change it, because I can't play like this. So, we're gonna... We're gonna go back up to full cinematic smoothing. Or rather, no cinematic smoothing. Because I play much better like this. Apologies for the viewing experience, but in future I will be casting uh, that way, probably. This isn't going to work, by the way, um, what I'm trying to do here. Because what I'm trying to do is kite the green skins a little bit and just use mobility hit and runs to break units very quickly. But I don't think it's going to work. Um, <laughs> let's actually put the Siren of the Red Ruin on number four. Five, six, and, uh, you know what, actually? Let's do the Manticore on five. Not that I'll remember to micro it, but... Got a pretty, pretty small build. Less than 400 unit models, but... <laughs> yeah, this build is so bad. I feel bad, but it's, it's, uh, I wanted to try it, you know? Because downhill charges? Uh, not so much. I mean, maybe over there, but I'm not too worried about it. I forgot to say good luck have fun. Before I read it up, forgot to check if he was ready. My bad. I'm terrible at etiquette, guys. I just go, go off of muscle memory sometimes, but it's all good. And, uh, yeah, we'll kind of keep you there. And, oh boy, here we go. Got some artillery. Okay, we want to go take care of that ASAP. Go ahead and just dodge all those. Uh, let's come up and start shooting. What do we want to shoot? Not honestly too worried about the spider riders here. Uh, maybe we start shooting trolls. Biggins. Just shoot the biggins, I guess. Ooh. Dodge some of those shots. Let's come through. I'm tempted to just soul stealer those guys right away, but uh Looks like we got some hidden foes here. Good, doing some good damage to those biggins. Hmm, yeah, I probably don't want to just sit here and take this fire, so let's go ahead and throw a Soul Stealer on that Doom Diver and see if we can take it out.
Okay, let's bring these guys down here. We need to bring the Medusa up as well. Let's kind of get you guys just kind of just kind of chilling here. Want to get the Medusa up and firing also. Um, let's see. Okay, so you guys, let's stop shooting the, <laughs> the biggins. Probably used way too much ammo there, but let's go ahead and just start charging this flank here. Okay, let's pull away with them. You guys get a charge in here. You can come in here like this. Get some extra melee defense. Let's uh, let's just charge here. Big nasty blob. Get you guys coming over here. Okay, Malekith needs to get out. Chariots need to get out. Malekith, you stayed in there way too long. Let's activate the screen. Counter charge those spider riders there real quick. Let's pull you out. Malekith, we need to swing around for a breath attack. Uh, who do we want to throw that on? Probably on this blob of archers right here. It's also Soul Stealer, the war boss. Speaking of shooting, we need to be shooting here. Uh, these Dark Riders stayed in for a little too long. But let's go rear charge these uh, Goblin Archers right here. Probably firing, <laughs> friendly firing the Siren of the Red Ruin a little bit there, but let's uh, let's dive. Oh, that's right in the middle of the trolls there. Let's dive right here again. See if we can finish off the uh, Goblin Big Boss there. Pull away, pull away. You guys need to be over here. Go ahead and uh, missile attack there. See if we can focus fire. Okay, Malekith's looking good. Let's go ahead and gaze a Malice right there. Now, okay, let's come back over here. Mm, man, I'm really, really not about that life. Let's come over here and get rid of that caster. Nope, didn't get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, this build did not work at all, by the way, in case you were wondering. Um, definitely played very poorly with it, but... Nope, Malekith's done for there. Let's see. Man's core's back. Let's just throw that back there, honestly. Should have been charging over here a long time ago, but that's fine. We still might be able to pull something out here. Maybe. Uh, both these spears are kind of blobbing right there. That's not good. Need you guys to pull away there. You guys just keep kiting. Malekith, I really would like for you to come back. Uh, okay, these guys. Pull up and around there. Should have done this a long time ago, but... Get the charge bonus active, charge back in there. You guys still keep keep doing your thing here. You uh, nuke that guy. You guys can chase them off. Come back over here. Malekith, please. Please, Malekith. You have 16 leadership. Come back, dude. Come back. Um, let's uh let's keep going over here. Looks like we mostly broke this. Okay, we can get back, get back, get back, get back. Nope, they're disabled. That's fine. Um, ah, you get away. Let's let's come disrupt this blob right here. 
come charge right here, actually. We'll just pull right through that blob right there, get the screen going to get the terror, terror route in. And then, cool, we can just pull through. Let's get a charge, rear charge here. Um, you guys can also pull away there. Malekith is back. Good, good, good. Leadership, bud. You're going to be all right. You still got a soul sealer left. Uh, let's missile attack those uh, trolls. So that we can uh, finish them off. Okay, chariots. Let's go. Charge. Start to finish some units off here. Malekith, need you back, bud. Chariots are out of ammo, which is fine. Let's keep going. Keep charging. Now Kith is almost back. Oh! oh no! No! That Night Goblin Shaman! I was trying to snipe him and he got Malekith. No! How could you? Okay, your line of sight is really obstructed. Really. Okay, I think I think the Medusas need some work. <laughs> that whole time we could have been shooting, but oh man. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't play that the best. I definitely should have been rushing that and just cycle charging with the chariots a lot more aggressively from the get-go. But, eh, I feel like that build almost worked. Like, I think there's maybe something there. Um, yeah, it took way too much damage on Malekith early on. Definitely should have been pressuring those uh, flanks a little more aggressively. But, hey, you live and learn. Yeah, unfortunately that Soul Stealer did not blow up enough of the Gabo. Uh, I was really hoping it would actually kill the artillery pieces, but I guess it didn't. I'll have to go back and rewatch that replay, but... Yeah, one more Soul Stealer and I probably could have got back in that game. It would have been enough to heal Malekith, and uh, yeah... I don't know about that, Rubber Duck. Maybe. I don't really play kite builds that much. That's definitely not really my play style. Um, yeah. Yeah, if that, if that was pre-nerf uh, chariots, I would have won 100%. No problem, but... Yeah, I gotta use the breaths earlier, for sure, for sure. I left Malekith. I just left him fighting in there for way too long. I needed to be cycle charging him a lot more, for sure. But yeah, it almost worked. I, I, I think this build definitely has something to it. Um, yeah. Drop Medusa, get handbows. Well, if you wanted to make it more competitive, I actually would probably cut the Medusa for a second Manticore. Because uh, Manticores are good, cheap terror you can kind of throw around. Um, and then I would use the other 800... I don't know. Or I might actually come in here and get like Slanesh's Harvesters instead for more Soul Stealers and Word of Pain. That's pretty good against green skins. Um, I might come in here and grab, yeah, Manticore. We could even get like the ROR Harpies maybe too. I don't know if that's gonna be great in this matchup. Um, we could get some Witch Elves to enrage once our infantry gets in range, but considering we're playing more of a mobile build, that's not really gonna synergize super well. Um. Unfortunately, we don't have enough for a chariot cold one, dude. Don't even have barely enough for one on foot. And elf heroes are so expensive. One cold one chariot? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good thought. Upgrade one of these to a cold one chariot so it has a little bit more punch. Just in case I run into something like black orcs, because I really don't have many tools for killing black orcs. That is one weakness of this build, for sure. Um, I guess I could even upgrade, like, two of these Cold One Chariots, and then uh, maybe even get the Ravagers of Rakarth as well. Um, so I'm kind of going a little more all-in on the Chariots, right? Or maybe we only get the one Cold One Chariot and then the three uh, Scourge Runners. 
almost gives us enough. Could like cut some shields here. From one Dark Rider and get one more spear. That wouldn't be the worst. Well, actually, we have enough to keep keep the shield. There we go. That actually might be a, a bit more competitive. You just have a little bit more numbers to chew on. The Mer Feral Manticore will operate in a lot of the same way as the Medusa. I mean, granted, the ROR Medusa, that actually, in that blob fight, that scream uh, that she has was actually pretty good there. Um, but this, I think, would be a little bit more competitive. You've got the ROR to kind of slow things down and apply poison, um, which is going to be pretty decent. Um, the Cold One Chariot will do a little bit more to, like, Black Orcs and Melee and stuff. So... Dark Rider crossbows. Well, you see, yeah, you could get Dark Rider crossbows. You want to go full kite, but this is more of a like hit and run kite, where I'm I'm using the Dark Riders as shock cavalry, taking advantage of their charge bonus as much as I can, um, along with the Manticores and the Chariots, just to kind of get units isolated and quickly just nuke them, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, this is probably a little bit more competitive, although I honestly... Yeah. I think, uh, I do think the ROR Medusa is okay. Like, I like, uh, for, for a kind of a mobile support, a mobile terror support, I mean, it's just not as cost-effective. You can literally take two Manticores for the cost of the Siren of the Red Ruin. It's not super cost-effective. Um, honestly, if, if Medusa were like 1,200, 1,150... I think that'd be a little bit better. Same thing, you drop the, the Siren of the Red Ruin down another, I don't know, 150 points or so. I think suddenly they're going to be a lot more cost-effective. Um, as it is right now, they just they struggle to be cost-effective in a lot of different situations. Um, but they're they're okay. The, this, the extra Blob Scream attack here, this one, um, Whale of Malice, is pretty good. I'll have to go back and rewatch that replay to see I, like how much damage it really did. But... Uh, a DAV multiplayer noob session where experienced players are the guides for Discord. Uh, we've done, I've, I've done, uh, we, uh, I casted for HW a while back. It was, uh, like a newcomer's tournament. And we've, we've done, he's done similar things like that in the past on his channel, but we could definitely do something like that over here, maybe in the future for sure. All right, I think I'm gonna take a break for the time being, um, but we'll we'll be back soon with some more of something. I'll figure out some uh, some format we can do. Maybe we'll do like a quick four man flash tourney, or maybe we'll just get like a couple players to do some best of fives or something. I don't know. Or maybe Turn will start streaming. Um, if he if he ends up actually streaming, I might not resume uh, immediately because I will want to be hanging out in his stream. But thank you all for coming out for today. That's uh, pretty much it for now. I know it's a relatively short one, but don't worry, I'll be getting some more streams in later today and of course we had more uh multiplayer battle get posted this morning myself playing in the german cup uh the hamster hamster army is hosting so big thanks to hamster exploding hamster for uh, having me thank Wool and uh, ludwig and everyone else so yeah and thank you all for being here we're gonna we're gonna keep it going later today so thanks guys and uh yeah we'll see you later